have centered. I'm doing that by eye, but. HW97 compression tubes are hardened from the factory and it's a case hardening. For a long time. You gotta break through that case. these here basically um, to um, basically just uh, you know if there's any lube in the chamber and everything and, and if you do any polishing on the top of this compression tube right here uh, it'll get marred up from sliding back and forth inside the tube I put these two buttons here to just kind of insulate this area so it'll stay better looking longer um, the cocking lever Attaches right here, and this is what pushes everything back. On barrel cocking guns, on uh, side lever guns, on uh, barrel, you know, barrel cocking side lever, all, any any spring piston rifle, wherever your lever that cocks the gun attaches to the piston or compression tube, whatever is sliding backwards to push everything back to lock to the trigger, uh, it's it's pushing not just backwards but it's pushing up and that's why if you look at any of the pistons that I button there's usually three buttons on the top any buttons on the bottom here uh, and, and this is my opinion everybody has their own way of doing it but uh, any buttons on the bottom uh, all they do is uh, they're there for looks uh, they don't um, serve any real purpose the only time uh, there's any 
pressure on this compression tube is when the gun is being cocked. And all that pressure is on this side of the piston. So I put buttons on the top. Uh, if I put buttons on the bottom, all that does, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is all that does is, is basically make the top buttons have to be shorter. Uh, this compression tube has about uh, five to about eight uh, thousandths. Um, I think this is 1175. Let me see. Uh, well, actually, it's, uh, yeah, well, depends on where you mic it. It's not perfectly round. Uh, it's about 70. Uh, one one six eight and a half or six nine and uh the idea of the uh the receiver that it's sliding in is is 80 80 that really about 82 82 83 is what you usually see so you if you put buttons all the way around the top ones have to be very thin i want them to be as long as possible so they'll last as long as um you know you just putting buttons on the bottom would just basically shorten the lifespan of your buttons on the top. That's about all they would do. Anyway, next step. Um, I'm gonna try real hard to get this where the camera can see it. Well, the light has got to be perfect for this. Uh, even before I start honing, I need a light. As usual, the light was right beside me, but I ran around looking for it. Um, if you look in this compression tube, you'll see kind of like a dark gray spot on that side. And you see some longitudinal lines and stuff. Uh, already, I can tell you, this, this compression tube, there's, there's flat spots. I can already see them. Um, they'll be a lot more prominent once I start honing on the tube. Uh, you saw me uh, buttoning the tube just a second ago, and you saw that I had to cut through about about eight or nine thousandths of a case hardened. These are case hardened; they're not through hardened, uh, but they're still case hardened. And near as I can figure, from the uh, whenever they originally did this. Uh, honing in here originally uh, I usually see three flat spots it looks like it, when this thing was um, originally honed it was held in something that had three jaws there's three distinct long flat spots on most of them uh, another thing that you uh, run into is here out on the uh, end of the tube um, especially if somebody's heated it up and taken this plug out before uh, it grows. Any heat causes it to grow on this end. But anyway, I have to, on 97 twos, the reason I'm shooting a little bit extra video, I know Jonathan wanted me to uh, shoot this video, but he uh, also wanted to point out, uh, I haven't checked this one. In the past, I've checked these, and they're typically somewhere around 56, 57 Rockwell because of that case hardening. And uh, if you just use normal aluminum oxide or even the silicon carbide uh, honing stones, uh, they don't, they just don't do it. So uh, actually what I've got is a, a CBN. Um, um, honing shoe that goes in there and I've got a uh, hardened uh, you get, it's a three-point contact. You have the stone, you have the shoes. The stone I'm going to be using is CBN. The shoe that's on the bottom is hardened, and it's about it's about 5960 Rockwell. Um, they make a carbide shoe, and I'm probably sometime in the future going to pick me up a, a carbide shoe. Um, on a lot of these 97s, if they're having a leak down issue, if you got a 97 and you've put kit after kit after kit in it, and they usually... They're around 800 feet a second, and then uh, after you know 800 uh, thousand rounds, uh, all of a sudden it starts dropping down and it starts hitting into the mid uh, 
700, you know, 760, 770. And uh, you can't get it up over, you know, about 830, 840 with, the, with a really strong kit. It's usually a leak down where this tube goes into the end. And on those, I mill a little uh, extra uh, pocket right here. And I make an adapter and I use a spa, heat it up and use a spanner wrench to get it off. At that point, I can through hone it and flip it around. And uh, But on this one, uh, these are brand new. Uh, they haven't been um, uh, dry fired a lot or anything like that. So you, you're not going to have as much of an issue with um, any kind of a leak down. So all I'm going to do on this one is just hone the ID of it and get it perfectly straight.